Okay, welcome back. This is part two of the uh, ground lecture. This is the second time I'm doing the ground lecture, but this time without the embedded videos. Um, if, uh, if you're at all wondering why uh, the white stripes are on here, well, because um, the very premise of the white stripes is about paring down to the basics, you know, one guitar, one drummer, and that particular album distill is very much about that idea and about you know, and also the aesthetics of the white stripes, just black, red, and white, everything looking very Bauhaus and distill like it's all about getting back to basics. So here's um, some more examples, some mid 20th century artists like Alberto Giacometti and uh, Frank Auerbach, more um, Auerbach career more starts kind of in the 60s. Um, Auerbach is still alive today and still painting and um, both of these artists are very much about the painters who feel like the fundamental thing about painting is the direct connection with the sitter and the, the direct connection with observation and painting. Here's a very different um, example of back to basic. Um, Tang Yo Hong is a, a Malaysian artist who I found out about when I started teaching my um, art appreciation class and I was looking for examples of figure ground plays, you know, for, for my figure ground and positive negative space lecture, design lecture for, for the art appreciation class. And I found all of these examples that looked really beautiful and that they all turned out to be made by the same illustrator, um, this young man, Tan Hyo Hong. And it turns out he's a young graphic designer. I mean, he's, young to me at least, probably older to you. I think he's about 35 or so. And when he graduated, um, he, you know, with his degree, he was not getting hired anywhere and picking up any work. So he decided that the thing to do was just to make some work on his own. And he started making these illustrative solutions to kind of the very, one of the most basic design problems, which is plays on figure ground. And it turned out to be something that he was really good at and had a lot of fun doing. Um, so focusing on something really fundamental and basic can be a really great place to start. Here's another example, James Terrell. You might not think of James Terrell as um, an artist who's very much grounded in a tradition, but he, his very premise, the idea that um, he makes these light sculptures, it starts with him, the very beginning of his career was him kind of asking the question of like, well, what is painting? And based on his, you know, college courses, painting was about the observation and understanding of light. And so he wanted to, like, how could I make painting more about light than any other painting? And so he um, started to actually make pieces where he projected light. And he started to make these pieces that kind of created this impression of form and, and sculpture. And they're all really uh, beautiful pieces. And we'll talk more about James Terrell later, but for right now, the main point I want to make is that as kind of very 21st century as his work might look, it's very much about this very kind of fun, fundamental idea of what the definition of painting is. Painting is the observation of light. Here's a piece called Breathing, um, Breathing, it, Breathing Light, I think is what this piece is called by James Terrell, and it's a, just a beautiful piece. All right, and the final theme for this lecture is living in the past. And so I want to just kind of emphasize the idea that this is something that artists have done through a large portion of art history, but especially in the 20th century, artists have returned to older periods for inspiration and to try to kind of re for revivalism, to try to find qualities about the past that they want to bring to uh, the modern work. And some of the contemporary artists I came up with as examples include uh, Micheline Thomas, whose work, actually there's a really nice piece of hers um, owned by the uh, Birmingham Art Museum. The last time we were there, uh, we saw her work. And another example of this would be Odd Nerdrum, who's a Norwegian painter and very much kind of inspired by the aesthetics of, um, uh, of a, Baroque painters like um, especially um, Rembrandt 
and but he still makes it very much a contemporary and a very kind of present day sort of practice especially with some of these more kind of surreal looking ones which feel more like more purposefully in the both a reference to the past but also about today okay and so lastly um we already talked about one graphic designer but um, pretty much in every lecture there's that final question well what about graphic designers well i thought of another example of a graphic designer who very purposefully um, looks to the past and tries to create work that's for a feel um, jonathan barnbrook who especially in the in the early 2000s was making a lot of very political work um, but using kind of the aesthetics of the 80s to kind of uh, kind of push a particular kind of uh, ideological agenda. All right, uh, that is the end of the lecture. Um, thank you very much.